Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. This is part 12 of my fitness database series. Whether or not you care about fitness, this database series has lots of tips and tricks for all kinds of databases. Today, we're finally gonna get into meal planning. So we've got food items in our database. Now we're gonna put those together into meals. So you don't have to keep saying, all right, I wanna add cereal with soy milk, with coffee. You can just put in breakfast and it'll, that's your standard breakfast and it'll be bundled as a meal. The same thing will work whether you're dealing with uh, products that have components or any kind of grouped items. And of course, if you haven't watched parts one through 11, go watch those and then come on back. All right, we are finally to meals. Now, I was thinking about making a meal groups because we got food groups, right? You know, where you could group different types of meals together, like, you know, all of your dinners can be grouped together and under dinners and all of your lunches. But I was thinking, me personally, I have maybe like a half a dozen or maybe 10 meals that I actually keep track of as a bundle. If it gets to that point where I think we're, we need to add it, we'll add it later. And that'll be good because I'll show you how to retroactively squeeze something in like that. But um, I think for now, just a single list of meals would be plenty, okay? If you want to put it, you know, breakfast, comma, cereal, and then, you know, breakfast, comma, eggs, that's fine. You can name these whatever you want to. But I think for right now, we can get away without doing meal groups. All right, so if you're familiar with my other databases, this the meal system will be analogous to orders for the customer database. For example, we'll have a meal table that has the information about the meal itself. Basically, it's name and notes. And then a meal detail table, which is uh, analogous to the order detail table that has all the items on it and the quantities. And then we'll do the math there, like calculating the total number of calories and stuff. Okay, you with me? So let's create a couple tables first. Create uh, table design. We're going to build our meal T. So this will be the meal ID. That's our auto number. We need a description. That's short text. Notes. That's long text. And that's pretty much it. Save it, meal T, and we're done with that one. All right, let's make another one. Create, table design. Oh, let me show you real quick before I do this. Here's my spreadsheet that I use. I've been using this for months myself personally, right? So here's all my food items. We've already got all this in there. These are different meals that I've set up, right? Like my fish, rice, fish, bleh, 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 fish, rice and vegetables, right? One, one or two cans of fish. I think I do two cans, right? I'd say I do the math over here in Excel. Uh, a cup of rice, can of mixed vegetables, a little bit of olive oil, and that's it. That's a meal. Here's another meal, turkey sandwich, right? Turkey, cheese, bread. Throw on some mustard, okay? Here's Rick's coffee, all right? Coffee's got no calories, but I use collagen creamer and a little bit of coffee, mate. I gotta have coffee, mate. Love the sweetness. I know, I know. It's only 30 calories to make my coffee bearable. I don't like black coffee and I'm trying to get away from using cream. Okay, anyways, so these are all examples of meals. All right, see, I, got, I only got five of them here. So now we got the meal table. So now we're gonna make the meal detail table. So meal detail ID, that's our auto number. We've got the meal ID, that's the foreign key. So that's a number of type long integer. Then we'll have a food ID, that's also a foreign key to the food table that indicates what items on there. And then a quantity, how many of that thing? Again, a number, let's default that to one. So if you just add something, you're gonna have one of them. And that's it. You could put a description or notes or any of that stuff here if you want to, I'm not gonna bother. And like I said, if you wanna learn more, this invoicing system that I built goes over pretty much the same kind of thing we're gonna be building here today, all right? So check this out. This covers relationships and all that stuff too. Now, everybody always asks me, well, what if the data changes? Like when you're building an order, okay, you're putting together an order with products on it. Let's say you're selling a computer, right? You put the hard drive on there, the memory on there, the monitor on there. And if those product item prices change in the future, then you don't want it to change your order. So you've got to copy that data to the order details, right? Well, that's not going to happen with food. An apple's always going to have the same number of calories and carbs and sugar. That, this data is never going to change. And if you change the food item, that just means, well, you learn something new and that's what it should be, right? 
If it's a, if it's a different kind of apple, make it a different apple. But but this stuff is never going to change. So by linking it directly to the food table, that's fine here. You don't have to store that you know copies of that information in here. Okay. Olive oil is always going to have the same nutrients in it, unless you get a different brand or a different type or a different kind. In that case, make a new item for it. So we don't need to store his store historical data in this table. Okay, let's save this as our meal detail T, primary key, yup. And let's put some sample records in. Now for this, I'd like to see my food table because we'll need the IDs here. And I'm gonna sort this by description in the table just so we can see stuff. And let's open up the meal table. We'll put that down over here. And we're gonna have forms for all this. I just like to put sample starter data in my tables it's easier to build the tables if you could see some stuff in here. Okay, so let's create our first meal and we'll, oh, I made this bit too big, come over here. We'll call this guy, this will be my fish, rice, veg. All right, that's what I'm calling it. So that's meal one. So meal one is gonna start off with some fish. So let's go find our fish, where's the fish? Okay, fish one can right there, that's food ID 38. And quantity, let's do two cans of that. Okay, then we need to find some rice. So one, rice is, where's rice? Rice, one cup is right there. That's food ID 44, one cup of rice. And then meal one, we need to put our veg in here. I think it's mixed vegetables. Yeah, mixed vegetables, one can. So that's 42. All right, and then finally we got the olive oil and someone's beaming in. And there's my olive oil, and that's 43, and one one drizzle. <laughs> it's it's never a teaspoon. It's always more than a teaspoon. I lie to myself. All right, so that's meal one. Meal two. Let's do um let's do morning cereal. Okay, so this will be meal two now. Let's find my Catalina Crunch. Where is it? Uh, cereal Catalina Crunch right there. That's that's food ID one. All right, we'll do one cup of that. Um, we might want to actually make quantity a double because I sometimes have a cup and a half. See, these are the little things you catch when you actually start working with it. So let's change, let's change this guy, quantity, instead of a number of type long integer, let's make that a double, All right? I only ever use long integers and doubles. There are other types, don't worry about them. I got a whole video as to why. There it is. You're curious? Go watch this guy. Talks about all the different data types and why I only use those two types. Basically, you got you got your integers, your counting numbers. Just use a long integer. And for anything with a decimal with a floating point, just use a double. They'll hold everything that you need to hold. Okay? Yeah, if you really want to optimize, you can shrink it down to just an integer or just a byte. But that, that was a big deal, you know, 30 years ago when the cost of storage space was 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 really high. Now it's just don't bother. Just just store use a long integer or a double. All right, but this will allow us to say I got a cup and a half of blueberries for example in my meal, okay? So save that. Close it. Let's open her back up again. All right. We're not done with our meal here. So we got two, we got one and one. All right, meal two, we got our soy milk. Where is that? Soy milk down here. Do I have it in here? I don't think I have it in here, do I? Well, we can quickly add it. So I'm gonna put it in here as, I'm gonna put it under dairy. That's one, I believe. Soy milk. I don't know what the nutrients are on it right now. We'll look it up later. But now at least I have an ID. I can stick that in here, 56 and one. And that's good enough for now. Okay, so all right, so we can close all this up. Save changes, yes. Close it, save changes, yes. All right, good to go. Now, before we build the forms, we're gonna build a query that's gonna do the math for us because in here, I know how, what the food item is and how many of them I have. This can calculate the total number of calories or protein or whatever you care about. We'll do that in a query. All right, so create, query design. I'm gonna bring in the meal detail table and the, the nutritional data is in the food table. So we'll bring in the food table as well. Now you won't be able to have an item in your meal detail table without it being in the food table because we're gonna only pick from a combo box later. So we don't need to worry about the join type here. We're not gonna let people just type stuff in. 
All right, I'm gonna bring in the meal t meal t meal detail dot t dot meal detail t dot star. I can't talk today. All right, uh, that'll bring us all that information over. We need. I care about the calories and the protein. You bring over whatever you care about. If you're tracking cholesterol or sugar or whatever, I don't care. I'm just doing these two things to keep it simple too. Okay. Then we're gonna calculate our total calories calories which is going to be colon here. I'll zoom in so you can see it. Shift F2. Total calories, which is calories times quantity. How many you got on there, right? And I'll do the same thing over here with total protein. So I'm going to zoom in. Total protein is protein times quantity. You do that for everything you care about. I just care about those. All right, we're gonna save this as my meal detail queue. And now when I run this, you can see there's my calculations. Okay. And now this is what's gonna go in the sub form. We're gonna have a combo box to pick the food ID. We'll type in the quantity and then we'll display the calories and the protein based on the amount. And we'll do that in the next class part 13 now today is thursday the 24th of july 2025 no it's not really but i'm recording this for for release on that date so tomorrow as far as you're concerned is quick queries friday so we'll be tackling part 13 on monday the 28th so tune in then same bad time same bad channel members you can watch it right now because i'm on a roll i'm gonna record a bunch of them tonight but that's going to do it for your tech help video for today. That's part 12. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I will see you Monday for part 13. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that Show More link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.